don't repeat yourself. This is the first principles that we learn as software engineers and probably it's also the first principle of programming that we teach other newer software engineers. However, dry is bad, it's evil, it's overrated. And I'm sure this statement has triggered something in you, so stay tuned and let me explain myself. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. Software engineering is the art of balancing trade-offs. However, this art turns into chaos when we religiously start to follow certain dogmas proposed as best practices or patterns. This happens because critical thinking stops the moment a dogma starts. And critical thinking should be one of the most important skills of software engineers. So to understand why I say that dry is bad, let's start by understanding why dry is actually good and what are the instances where this principle of not repeating ourselves is very important. So if code is duplicated in our code base and we need to perform a certain change, that, that means that we need to go to each and single place where we have that code duplication and perform that specific change. And obviously that's more complicated to do than just by applying the modifications in only one single place. So the overall cost of maintenance of a code base that doesn't really have duplication is very low and that's why not repeating ourselves is a very good thing to do. So let's look into a practical example to understand when exactly applying the dry principle is actually good. Here we have two classes that actually are of interest to us. First of all, we have this product class and the most important part of this class is that, okay, we have this list of integers which represent ratings that a product might get. And then we have this method get average rating, which returns obviously the average of the ratings that we have here for this specific product. And then we have also this seller concept and this seller also has some few properties, but also this get average rating, which of course also calculates the average average rating of this specific seller. And there here we can see that we have this kind of duplicated logic because we have this idea of calculating an average which is also here in the seller, but it's also here in the product. So it's exactly the same idea, it's exactly the same stuff, and we have it in two different places. Now, this is obviously some kind of duplication, and here I guess that this do not repeat yourself principle might be very, very important. So let's extract this common logic basically to not be duplicated in each class, but let's extract it somewhere that could be reused by both of these classes. Now, obviously there would be a lot of different things that you could do here, but what I would do here is I I will just create a new class and I will create an extension method for list. So let's call this list extensions. And here let's make this class first of all static because it will only contain extension methods. And let's get here a method that would kind of like be an extension method all on a list of integers. That's obviously the ratings and then it will calculate the average. Now what we can do obviously is come back to the product and replace this with this simple ratings. And as this is an extension method, we have this get average that we have here and we can simply reuse that and we can go to the seller and do exactly the same stuff. So let's just do it. Let's have this ratings dot get average and we would be good to go. So no duplication anymore. Everything that we have right now is basically in one class, in one single place, which is all the logic for calculating an average. And obviously to have everything working here, we obviously need to return this and also go to the seller and do exactly the same thing. And now we should be good to go. But you would ask, how did we know that this is a good place to actually apply this dry principle? And I'll try to explain this by going back to where everything started. The dry principle was first discussed by Andrew Hunt and David Thomas in their very popular book called The Pragmatic Programmer. They essentially formulate the principle like this. The remarkable thing here is that they initially didn't put the emphasis on the idea of repetition, but on the idea of a source of authority for a same routine. This means that if we have to perform the same routine all over again, then we need to have one single source of authority for that specific routine, which essentially means having that routine defined in one single place. But this was expressed in a chapter called the evils of duplication. And therefore, I think it's obvious that if we combine these two, we arrive to the modern day dogma that essentially says duplication is the root of all evil. But is this always true? Let's look at another practical example 
example where applying dry might not be the best idea. This example is a little bit more complicated, but it's very common to all applications that use services. And let's look first in this order service. And we have skipped all the business logic for this video purpose so that we can concentrate on what we actually want to achieve here. So here we will have some business logic that kind of like would complete an order. But then the last step here is that we would want to kind of like send an email. And here we have an SMTP client. That's obviously just a console write line, but I guess the idea is very simple. So what we do here is we create an email with a certain body that's specific for this email with a specific subject and we add this uh, user example as, as a two to that email and then we just send that email. So everything is nice and easy. But then if we go to this payment service class, we see that we have kind of like exactly the same thing. Now, of course, we would do some business logic, but then in the end, we would construct a new email with a certain body, with a certain subject. Then we will add this user.example.com and then we will use the SMTP class to send that email. And I am sure that probably in a lot of cases, if you would submit a pull request with this type of change, you would probably get back some comment that we should maybe extract this common logic, which is sending the email, which is here and which is also here to maybe some other third service that would be an email sending service. And that's actually at the first look, a very good idea to do because, well, it kind of like, well, removes the duplication that we currently have because we do exactly the same things here in both of these methods. The only thing that's different is kind of like a little bit what the body looks like and the subject, but, but the whole routine is exactly the same. So it looks kind of wise to actually bring this to a central place from where we could use it only once. Now to do this what we would kind of like end up doing is create a new class and we'll name this class email service. Cool. And in this class we'll have this uh, SMTP client private read only SMTP client and let's call it uh, client and then let's also have Rider implement our constructor for us and we would be good to go. Then what we'll end up having here is probably a method public void send email. And what we'll actually want to do here is we'll get an int user ID and an int order ID. And the idea behind this is that if you want to refactor this, usually it's also we think about the single responsibility principle, isn't it? So the responsibility of generating the email should be part of the email service, not of the order service or the payment service. So what we'll end up having here is let's say let's go here and just let's reuse this part and we'll kind of like adapt it so let's go back to the email service and in this method we would have something like that now we generate the email we send everything and we would be good to go however here actually gets very ugly because right now we are sending this email but this email is useful only if it's sent for the order service but we also have the payment service that needs to send an email that is slightly different here. And what we'll end up doing here is actually implementing this type of logic. And believe me, I have seen this type of logic in really each application that uses services. I have seen this procedure at least once. So what we'll end up doing is have here a flag bool is order completed. And based on this ID is order completed, we implement then, then this logic, then okay, if it's an order completed, then we do this. And if it is not an order completed, then we do by default some other thing. So this means that we need to rework this method here. And I have already prepared here something like this. Uh, so is order confirmation. This is how we should kind of like name uh, this variable like that. And we have implemented this logic and we say, hey, if it's order confirmation, then we want to kind of like send an email with this body and this subject. And if it is, well, in any other case, then we want to send it with this kind of thing. However, here the problem is right now that what happens if, for instance, right now we we will have some more complicated stuff for the payment service. Now we would probably have to kind of like enhance the incoming parameters here for that method and add some few more. But what if we have then a third service that needs to send an email like user registration service? Well, then we would have to come here and add another flag and then probably an else if. And then if the user registration, we would do this in some other way. And this is kind of like very, very ugly. Obviously, it kind of like, well, violates the open closed principle. And this code is overall very, very bad. You would argue that, hey, we have a lot of tools to our disposals, like we can use a factory or we could use a builder. And obviously, let's make everything fluent because fluent is just cool. 
but stop please just stop guys what we need to do here is just sending an email in three or four lines of code do we need to add that complexity of a builder or of a factory for just three or four lines of code that's really not maintainable that's not how clean code should look like so we shouldn't just use some principles some patterns only because we know them and we know how to apply them in some cases this doesn't really make sense because it adds more complexity to the mix and bonus it also introduces a very tight coupling because right now both the order service and the payment service they depend on the exactly same routine so they are actually coupled so overall in this case sticking to the dry dogma actually increases the overall cost of maintenance of our application but how is that even possible to understand this let's go back to another classic book which is clean architecture written by robert c martin in this book there is a chapter called independence and uncle bob in that chapter actually makes a distinction between two types of duplication. The first one is essential duplication, which is duplication that we had in the first example. So when we need to perform a certain change in one place, then we need to perform the exact same change also in other places. So that's really a duplication that we need to avoid and applying the dry principle here might be a good idea. And then there is also accidental duplication. And that happens when we apparently have two duplicated segments of code. But if we look deeper into those segments of code, we see that they actually change at a different rate and for different reasons. So in other words, when we have some duplicated sections of code, but in the end, they have different reasons for change, then this is not a true duplication. And this is the kind of duplication that we could permit in our code base. And that's exactly the case of the second example we looked at. So as a bottom line, we see that we have different types of duplication and we shouldn't just simply dogmatically apply the dry principle whenever we whenever we see some code that it appears to us as being duplicated instead when we see code that it seems to be duplicated we should always try to ask ourselves if that specific code has different reasons for change because in that case we have accidental duplication and that type of duplication should actually not be dried out if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like this video so you will make it easier to discover for others that might find it useful also subscribe to this channel if you didn't do that already so that you are always up to date with the new content that we create here last but not least if you think that there might be other people that would find this content useful don't be shy and share it with them in your social networks at works through email wherever you think there might be people that find this useful just share it and they will be thankful to you last but not least if you have any comments any thoughts or if you just want to get in touch with me don't be shy once again and head over to the comment section of this video and just type in your question or just leave your comment and I would be more than happy to get a discussion going. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.